This is so good and it's pretty simple as well. I am so happy I decided to make a full day of this food. Today I am going to show you some of the foods I ate growing up in the Armenian American communities of Philadelphia and New York. I am going to show you breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a simple little dessert. A quick thank you to all my PayPal and Cash App contributors for making my videos possible. So I am going to make a dish called Lubia Havgitov, which basically means green beans with eggs. So what I do is I buy the fresh green beans. Now, the most popular way to, to make this uh, is probably using canned French green beans. So with the fresh green beans, I just cut off the pointy ends and then I cut the green beans into thirds. So I have about 15 green beans here. My burner on about medium with a tablespoon of butter in it. Put the green beans in the pan with butter. I'm going to put the lid on here and just let them cook for a minute or two on their own. This recipe serves too. So I have four eggs beaten in this bowl with some salt and pepper to taste. Now I'm going to put that in the pan with the green beans. The green beans in this recipe, I mean this is going to be a little bit crispy. You can always pre-cook your green beans if you want to, but I like them a little fresh and crispy. I'm going to put the lid back on and let that cook for a few minutes. On the one side, you're going to cook your eggs and green beans until it is pretty much mostly set, all right? And then you gotta be careful when you do this, but take your lid, put it over, and then turn it upside down. And then slide it back into the pan. So it cooks on the other side very briefly. It still makes me a little nervous sometimes when I do that, but you get the hang of it once you know that the eggs are set on top on you know the first side. I'll just kind of cut that down the middle with the spatula and put each side on one plate. We're going to add just two more items to this breakfast. One of those items is pita bread. Now I think in Armenia today, I think lavash is much more popular than pita bread. I'm not sure, but for traditional um, Armenians from like the western part of Armenia, pita bread I believe is more popular. And then the last item I'm going to add here on the plate is some monster cheese. Now, monster cheese, I don't really know where it's from originally, but I'm including it because when I was a child and I went to Armenian church, they um, they always had on Sunday, they had this bread called chareg, which I, I made a video of that previously on YouTube. And uh, they had the charegs, which are little like sweet breads, and they had monster cheese on the side at church. And it was like my favorite snack. So that's why I include monster cheese in my Armenian dishes today. And they're, they're nice and colorful with orange rind. So I have about six pieces here. All right, so this is going to be my Armenian breakfast. I'm tasting the eggs with the green beans, the lubia havitov. Mm -hmm. mm. Very good. Now let me show you, for those of you who watch my videos, you've probably seen a sumac in my videos many times. So um, I can put a little bit of sumac on this here. I usually like to eat it uh, plain without the sumac, just salt and pepper. Have a little bit of that Munster. This is one of my favorite cheeses. And of course, some pita bread. This is so good and it's pretty simple as well. I am so happy I decided to make a full day of this food. All right, so I will see you next for lunch. It is time for lunch and lunch, 
it is time for our Armenian lunch. And on the menu is going to be eggplant chickpea stew as well as pita bread. So this is actually a meal that vegans can eat because there's no animal products in it. But it is just so delicious no matter what type of diet you are on. So let's go over the fresh ingredients that are going to be integrated into this. It is a medium eggplant, a medium onion, two cloves of garlic, and a small bunch of parsley. This came from a large bunch of parsley at the store, so just figure it's like about a one inch measurement on the stem area. Okay, that's what you would need. And I am going to be using the, uh, the stems as well as the leaves. And then another ingredient I want to talk to you about, which you might not be used to cooking with, is dried mint. Armenian and uh, Middle Eastern foods in incorporate dried mint into certain dishes. And it, and it sounds funny, but it's actually really good. Let's start by adding to a large saute pan a quarter cup of olive oil. Add to that the medium chopped onion and two cloves of chopped garlic. Let the onion and the garlic soften with the lid on the pan for about 10 minutes. After the onions and garlic have softened, now we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients. So, I have all that chopped parsley, including the stems and the leaves. A 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes. A can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans with the liquid included. And now we have all of this cubed eggplant to add. And get the rest of that in there. On this plate I have a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of sumac, one teaspoon of dried mint, and half a teaspoon of cumin. All going in. This is just gorgeous. This is really gorgeous. All those colors. So this is what that all looks like before it is cooked through. I have the heat all the way up. After this is boiling for about two minutes, Turn the heat down a little bit and cook for 20 to 25 minutes until everything is soft. Tomatoes are really common in Armenian cuisine. Uh, garbanzo beans are popular throughout the Middle East, like, you know, in hummus and stuff like that, and various soups and stews. So those two ingredients are popular, and the eggplant is as well. So, um, yeah, lots of things in that pan to look forward to. The herbs and spices that are common in uh, the Middle Eastern Armenian cuisine that I mentioned were the sumac and the mint. I mean, you can certainly make this dish without these, but these add like flavor accents that are important in Armenian cuisine. All right, folks, the stew is done. It is nice and steamy. And I'm going to serve myself up a bowl of this and show you up close. It's nice and thick with all the eggplant and chickpeas and pieces of diced tomatoes. I would say it makes at least, I would say about four servings like this. See, look at that. Now I'm going to get some pita bread to eat this for lunch, which I have right here. Okay, and let's just dip a little bit in there. Hmm. Army people like to do when they eat their stews and stuff like that, sometimes they'll like, they'll bend the bread and then like grab some of the food with it. Like that, they'll get something in there.
Mm. I don't do that so much because I think the pita bread gets eaten too fast like that. So I'll just eat a little bit at a time. I highly recommend this. This is absolutely delicious. So, all right, that's lunch, guys. That is Armenian lunch. Well, I am going to go savor the rest of this. So see you in a little bit. It is time to make Armenian dinner. And for that, I am making a dish called lahmacun, also called Armenian pizza. And there are a couple of important ingredients that I need for this. The first one is ground lamb, one pound of ground lamb. Where I live, ground lamb is a little bit expensive. And what a lot of people do, uh, they use ground beef instead. The fresh ingredients are half a bunch of fresh parsley, a medium green bell pepper, a medium onion, and two cloves of garlic. And of course there will be other ingredients. I have my oven preheating at 375 degrees. Now a shortcut I'm going to be taking for this recipe is using tortillas as a base. So let me explain. The base of lahmacun is generally a very thin dough round, a sort of like a small pizza crust, you know, flat. But what a lot of people do is they'll use flour tortillas instead, if they, especially if they like to make this more frequently. So what I did was I got some whole wheat tortillas as well as white flour tortillas. I diced the onion and the garlic cloves as well as the green bell pepper. Lahmacun, they often recommend that you use a food processor to get the ingredients down like as small as possible. I don't worry about that too much. I really don't like actually using kitchen gadgets because you have to wash them out and there's blades and everything involved. I like to use my hands. So I'm going to get those into the pan. Next, I'm going to take all of this parsley and finally snip it up, the stems and the leaves. I'm going to do that right over the bowl. This is what everything looks like so far. Now, I should mention that lakmajun and these other dishes are usually also part of other ethnic cuisines too. In the Middle East, sometimes uh, Armenians share the same, uh, some of the same cuisine with like Greek people, Arab people, uh, sometimes other, other countries as well. So um, sometimes people say that a dish came originally from one country and then they'll start arguing. They'll say, no, it's from this or that country. But uh, it's, def it's definitely kind of hard to determine that because because a lot of these countries, they are clustered together. People who traveled through, who migrated through countries in the past, they passed on their cuisine. So it's really hard to tell where a lot of cuisine originated from because it's shared by so many people. The ground lamb in there. Before we get to the herbs and spices, let's quickly add some of these crushed tomatoes. I have a little bit more than three quarters of a cup of crushed tomatoes. Let's say about four fifths of a cup of crushed tomatoes I'm going to add in here. I'm going to add two tablespoons of uh, tomato paste in. I have two tablespoons of flour, which is like kind of a thickener. I have two teaspoons of dried mint, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sweet paprika, which is a little bit different than regular paprika, one teaspoon of sumac, as well as a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just going to mix these on the plate with a fork really quickly. Let's just add the herbs and spices and flour in. I'm going to manually mix all this together and then see you back in a minute. I now have the mixture all combined, which I did with my hands. 
And what I did was take out a couple of sheet pans and put uh, three whole wheat tortillas on one sheet pan and two white tortillas on the other. You kind of have to like work in batches. And so the reason why they call this Armenian pizza is because you take a little bit of the filling. It includes the, the tomatoes and meat and everything. Uh, sort of like in pizza, traditional pizza, all the ingredients are separate. In Armenian pizza, it's combined. So what you do is you take uh, a few tablespoons and just start putting it in the middle of each tortilla. And then you want to make the spreading out as thinly as possible. So, so just spread that out like that with your spoon, spread it out. All right, here we go. This is too with the spread all over. Now, why, why some people like to use the food processor and they recommend it is because these tiny little chopped ingredients um, kind of spread smoother if it's more a little bit more like a paste. To me, it doesn't bother me. I think it gives it the lahmacun a little bit of texture and you don't have to, you know, lug out a, f a food processor and all that. So that's what it looks like. And I'm going to put these in the oven. Here we are. Here is a lahmacun fresh out of the oven. And the edges are crispy because this is a thin tortilla. So this was 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Now you can you can go down to like, like 13 minutes if you want. I like mine a little bit crispy. But now I'm going to uh, taste this with you here. And I'm gonna eat a couple of more for dinner as well. And then we're gonna have like a simple dessert later. I have a little piece here with um, some parsley and meat and everything on it. So let's, let's try this. Mm. Just as I remember, delicious. That is wonderful, everyone. There's a reason lahmacun is my favorite Armenian dish. So let me know if you try this. I know it's a little labor intensive, but I will have the recipe below the video and you know, try it out. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to eat the rest of this and see you for dessert. I hope you enjoyed those three meals. I came upstairs to the bedroom to get some quiet and you know just relax a little bit after uh, working in the kitchen and doing the filming and I'm having some dessert now. Now there are uh, a number of Armenian pastries and cookies and stuff like that uh, that I could have had and I could have made but what I decided on another traditional treat which is uh, like nuts and dried fruit. That's something common a lot of Armenian people eat, other Middle Eastern people as well. And I decided not to eat any of the nuts. Um, it would have been like walnuts or pistachios, stuff like that. So what I have here is I have some dried dates. I absolutely love these things. Some dried dates, right? Nice and chewy. And I have some dried apricots as well as some figs, some dried figs. Now the, um, the figs that are like, I guess most common, or I don't know if they're the only figs that are eaten in Middle Eastern cuisine, are those the brownish figs, the brown ones. I don't like the taste of those, and I, I think they're too dry. So I eat these figs that are sold by SunMade. These are dried mission figs and it says California so I don't know if they're grown in other parts of the world I mean they probably are but these are these are moist and just so delicious so I highly recommend these and the dates especially sometimes if you're not lucky the, the dried fruit you get is just way too dry like there's no moisture in it at all mm. that's the sweetest one
These taste a little, like almost like oranges. And wonderful. I'm going to pick up and eat the rest of these in a little bit. Now I'm going to talk to you about a couple different Armenian American cultural groups. So I'll start with the group that I'm from. So uh, I am half Armenian from my father's side. And the overwhelming majority of Armenian American people that I knew of were dis descended from people that immigrated to the United States over a hundred years ago, basically. So these people are pretty much very well integrated into the fabric of the United States. From, you know, my memory, these Armenians were, you know, pretty quiet people, church going, you know, religious, little conservative, hard working. You don't you don't really hear much from them, right? So I'm kind of descended from that group of people. Now, um, there's also uh, I probably would say the most prominent group of Armenian American people live out west. They're in California and I think they are concentrated in two areas or three areas. So there's Glendale, California, Fresno, California, and I think there's an area called Northridge. I'm not exactly sure where that is. So that those areas I believe have large enclaves of both Armenian Americans and new Armenian immigrants. And it's, from my understanding, a pretty lively, robust community. So I think that they are much, much more visible than the group of people that I descend from. And uh, they are, um, some of them are directly from Armenia and some are also uh, from groups of people that immigrated like a hundred years ago. Let's talk about uh, language. I speak Western Armenian pretty much as well as you can for having uh, been taught by my father in the house I grew up in. Uh, so Western Armenian is a dialect that does not have really have an official home because the people that spoke it, uh, they were they were escaping war. They were escaping war. And um, for a lot of immigrants, they actually never taught their children Armenian, but my father did. And so uh, I, Eastern Armenian is the official language of Armenia. I actually don't understand it very well. So even though I like I, I speak Armenian, I don't actually understand and understand it when somebody from Armenia speaks very well. Now, they understand me, and I think sometimes I think my accents, um, not my accent, but some of the words are a little uh, different. But, um, but anyway, I'm going to say something for you, Armenian. Actually, I'm going to recite the Armenian alphabet. So the Armenian alphabet is I penkim tayechza eoto je inilion hedzagen hotzarat jemen hi nushavo chabeche raseve dunretso. So the Armenian alphabet has about, I think it's 36 letters or 37 letters. And some of those letters sound like they make, um, like they have like the same exact sound, but I think they're, they're different. I can write Armenian on like, like a first grade level. I used to be able to do it a little bit more because, because my father was teaching me when I was younger. But I'll say something for you in Armen Western Armenian now. My uh, pronunciation and accent is a, li a little off because I was born here, but that's okay with me. I'm, I'm not trying to be anybody else. So let me see. Um, I'll say here, So I said, this food is very tasty. Uh, so that's something simple or I mean, I'm not quite housewife now. Yes, shot or him for tun. I mean, YouTube Garyanis Egar. So that means uh, my name is the quaint housewife, and I'm very happy that you came here to my YouTube channel. All right. So <laughs> I'm sure if I made any um, mistakes in there, some someone else who speaks Armenian would um, will will tell me. Talk about your ethnic background and what's special to you. Just anything you want in the comments, okay? 
thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again for my next video. Gishapari. And that means good night.